We're standing in a circle with several other women. Hi, I'm Anya, and I'm excited today. I'm Joanne, and I'm very grateful to be here. I'm Carmen, and I'm hopeful. I'm Catherine, and I'm sad. I miss my children. I'm Sabrina, and I'm frazzled. I just got here. Here is the Santa Fe County Adult Detention Facility. The CO, correctional officer, has just screamed, STRESS MANAGEMENT! <sighs> we never know how many women will be joining us for our stress management program. It might just be one person, or the room could be filled with 10. The classroom we're in is maybe 10 by 15 feet. There's a window that looks into the hallway with its constant echoes of steel doors slamming and security radios beeping, and another window that looks into a social worker's office where we often overhear phone conversations from newly arrived inmates. We're volunteers. And for the next hour and a half, we'll be leading a variety of activities. We start with a check-in, first verbally, then with a gesture, and we build it into a movement phrase. This is the way that we love to begin, hearing each woman's voice, honoring her feelings, and engaging her creativity. This is the heart of what we strive to offer in this setting, a circle where each woman feels respected and can cultivate self-reflection. We continue by inviting our participants to try different practices that are very meaningful to us, including yoga and dance, meditation, and creative writing. We usually only see the participants once or twice, because this is a jail, which means it's temporary. They're awaiting bail, awaiting sentencing, or serving a short sentence. Occasionally, we're really lucky, and we can put together a program that may run over a month or six weeks and build some continuity with the women. Once, we were able to collaborate in creating a permanent labyrinth in the recreation yard at the jail. This is the concrete enclosed courtyard where the women spend at most one hour a day outdoors. We stood out there under a blue sky framed by silver barbed wire and using a large wooden compass, we drew the first circle and pencil that would become the center of the labyrinth where you arrive after following a winding path. We're sitting on the ground for the day, painting and laughing together, and Sabrina says, this is so much fun, I wish I could be doing it with my children. Then there's a point where we make a circle. Inmates, volunteers, and staff that have chosen to spend their Sunday with us doing this project. And one by one, we dedicate the labyrinth to a place of beauty. A place to cultivate mindfulness to benefit ourselves and our families. A place of peace. A place to find guidance and strength. A place to find a new path in life. In their lives, these women are navigating a different kind of path, awaiting sentences, changing court dates, justice delayed. They're in a kind of maze full of dead ends, often with no end in sight. The labyrinth doesn't have any dead ends. Instead, they're twists and turns. And that gives us a chance to reflect on our lives. Many of the women are dealing with addiction problems. One bad night, Sabrina said. It just took one bad night for me to end up back here in jail. Carmen says, I relapsed after the death of my sister. Leaving the center of the labyrinth, we retrace our steps, and then the ending becomes a kind of new beginning. After we walked the symbolic journey together, Maria reflected, leaving the labyrinth, I let go of everything on my shoulders, and I forgave myself. When I get to the end, I feel like there's a door. And when I open it, I'm not here anymore. I'm back at home, hugging my mom and telling her I'm sorry. And after everything, 
I'm free, and I've been given a second chance. We know that most women behind bars now will be returning home, and sadly, in many cases, worse off for it. We see that on the societal level, prisons don't actually reduce crime because they're not designed to solve the real problems that send people there, but instead tend to disguise them and perpetuate them. Our local jail serves as a catch-all for people that fall through the cracks in other systems because of homelessness and poverty, mental illness, and addiction. We're aware that mass incarceration is becoming epidemic in the United States, and the statistics are staggering, particularly for women. From 1980 to 2014, the increase in incarceration rate for women is 700%. This disproportionately affects poor communities, as we know, and it overwhelmingly targets people of color, as the movements for black lives and native lives call us to understand, and it harms all of us. Most of the women are not there for violent crimes. In fact, 85 to 90 percent of the women there experience violence prior to incarceration, from child abuse, rape, domestic violence, and some of them that are there for violent crimes, it's because they were in a very difficult, abusive relationship. I met Deirdre when we were doing a series of dance classes over a week in a prison on the theme of forgiveness. She was doing rocking gestures and cradling gestures, and I would notice at the door teachers standing there with tears in their eyes. At the end of the week, one of the teachers shared with me her story. Deirdre had been in a very difficult domestic violence relationship. She didn't know what to do. She overdosed herself, her infant, and the dog. The infant and dog died, and now Deirdre was serving time. She couldn't express it about her crime yet, and dance became a place where she could begin to share her emotions. Barbara was five when she was abused by her grandfather. Later in life, she endured three abusive marriages. But when she discovered that her third husband had abused her granddaughter, she snapped. and She shot and killed him with a gun that he had given her as a Christmas present. Deirdre and Barbara's stories really haunted me. No woman should have to go from the prison of a relationship to a prison behind barbed wires and concrete blocks. So about six years ago, several women and I filmed a, formed a nonprofit called Healing Voices Personal Stories. We make films about domestic violence survivors who successfully move from a relationship and rebuild their lives. Now, Deborah and Barbara were really, really lucky because they were at a facility that had excellent programming. They're now back in the community, and those programs made it possible for them to re-enter their community, although the pain will always stay with them. Although there are some wonderful models for programs happening here and around the country, we've been shocked to see how few services and programs there are to support people while they're incarcerated and as they try to transition back out. There's room for all of us to get involved at every level of this system, to dismantle the harm and begin the work of rehumanizing everyone. Volunteering in your local prison or local jail is something you can do. For when you help on the inside, you're also enriching the outside. For our hour and a half, we've been working in a circle. It reminds us of the common bonds between all of us, for we are all teachers learning from each other. Of all the activities that we facilitate in this setting, we have found self-acceptance meditation to be the most impactful. We believe that as we all allow ourselves to be more fully human, we will no longer stand for this norm of throwing people away. In the practice of loving kindness, we begin with ourselves, accepting ourselves and offering ourselves kindness 
And then we try to expand our hearts and minds through training until we can include everyone. Please, try it with us now. Just bring one hand to your heart to touch in with your own tenderness and innate goodness that does not need to be earned. And silently say to yourself, I'm okay. There's nothing wrong with me. Just noticing how it feels to say that and letting those words sink in. Whatever I feel is okay. I am worthy of love and respect. And may each of us be safe, free from suffering, free from danger. May all of us know peace and the joy, true freedom.